Welcome to Cardcore Gamer. This is a series of videos all about board games. I made today's video because I was looking back at how I got into gaming, and after the videos I've put out already, hopefully some people's interest will be piqued and they'll want to know how to find out more and where to go to find these things out. So I looked back and I thought, well, the one thing that got me into gaming was my FLGS, otherwise known as Friendly Local Game Store. I'm lucky enough to have Spirit Games in Burton, which is, in my opinion, one of the best game shops in the country, pretty much on my doorstep. Uh, so I took the opportunity, and uh, took advantage of their hospitality, to go down and ask benevolent Dungeon Master Phil a few questions about the history of the shop, about the games nights they run, and about how to get into gaming in general. Let's have a listen to what he had to say. We came into being accidentally as a shop. Uh, it was a byproduct of a game we were, we were trying to produce at the time. Uh, and uh, that was down in Croydon in 1984. Uh, we just uh, had a little unit for Christmas and then it turned out that uh, there was a, a demand for, for stuff, particularly it was the fancy boom, uh, boom at the time. And I was spending half my time still going out dispatch riding to get the money in. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, by the time we moved up here in 88, it, uh, it, it had um, it really got, got on its feet. We've now got to the stage where we've got the the, the, the next generation of people who uh, came in here as uh, uh, as children and now bringing their children who have now got to old enough to play games with them. So that, that's that's the, the aim of any any gamer who's going to get uh, involved in breeding. Uh, <laughs> if they, uh, if they, they're waiting for that time when the uh, the offspring are at an age when they can actually play games with them. There's been a sudden whole rush of games that, that uh, actually go back to that era uh, when we were uh, down in Croydon. Uh, some old, we published Avalon Hill games and, and things, so um, that's been a feature of, uh, of the moment. Wizwar was the, the one that definitely people have been waiting 20 years for to finally come back. And, uh, yeah, the, these are the ones uh, where we were saying before how Fantasy Flight have picked up the licenses and, and basically Either, either tweaked or untweaked, have re-released some sort of old uh, old yeah, games which right, people regard, right. I guess, as classics. But uh, the, the, the games from the the 80s have a lot of flavour, but of course they're, they're, the mechanics are, are very clunky compared with, with modern games generally. Um, so <clears throat> you get uh, an example of the, uh, the Lords of Waterdeep, the new uh, Dungeons & Dragons based uh, but Euro style game. It works very, plays very well, it plays very smoothly, but it could be almost any other game. There are cubes representing adventurers, but I played a whole game oh, and didn't realise they represent adventurers, they were just cubes you read around and, <laughs> and enjoyed the game. And uh, But, but uh, yes, you go, oh, that's a bit like that, isn't it? Oh, I understand that. So it makes it easy to understand because it's, mm. if you're familiar with the, 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 the actual mechanism deployed. But that means it hasn't got that sort of high air of excitement that, that, that some of the, the games from the, the early 80s tend to tended to have, but then they didn't necessarily play so well. One of the big plus points, of, of, in this instance, Lord of Waterdeep, is that it, it's quick as a result of it playing well. It'll play faster than the, the, the similar games it's based on, and which gives it a bit of an edge in many circumstances. Mm. Uh, you can always tell when a game is, is um, kind of harking back to that time. People are perhaps uh, uh, are not so much a modern games designer but somebody who's come up with a game and they're thinking of before then they'll tend to put a few more bits into it which means the game again has that that's almost slightly retro feel in that there's yeah. lots of interesting bits and it and it's nice but actually it's harder to get into than one that's been a, a modern professional games designer who come up with lots of slick bits right which might be a little bit soulless in comparison but the choice is so huge these days that there's got to be you know, to look through and find which what suits and there's going to be something. Now the way we find out about uh, how the games play is to, to actually play them. Uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's funny that. <laughs> it, can, it can work. Uh, uh, every Wednesday night, pretty religiously, you know, without fail, uh, we may be with the exception if it falls on Christmas Day, but generally speaking, <laughs> um, we will play games here on a Wednesday night and uh, and, and it's not only enjoyable but it's immensely useful to, to try games out personally rather than go by the reviews because any magazine or particularly board game geek of course it's a yeah. major one people look at nevertheless you, as time has gone by you can recognise that same style of 
this one group of people who are the the leaders, opinion leaders, mm. really, and a lot of people who will will follow. So there will be games that will be hailed as a type of game when you actually play them yourself and you go, well, I'm not quite sure how they got that impression. Well, so yes. it's always very handy to have a, a, a completely different group of people in, in, in many instances playing. You, you know that the, um, the people who are going to do most of the reviews in Board Game Geek will be you know, hardened gamers. And, yes. And they will... <laughs> and they will um, they will it, it, they will know what what works well, what doesn't. Lots of experience of this and that, and they will be tend to be critical on perhaps more on, on sort of technical grounds um, than than somebody who just walks into to the game and goes, oh, actually, I quite enjoy this. We always have fluffy games as well as in depth games. That's the point. <laughs> we will. So somebody who's who's not sure how much they want to get involved in games, they're still going to be a, a people who are more than welcome to say, ah, let's play a nice easy game, and because. Half the people have got a hard day at work, you, you don't want too much thinking anyway. So yeah. there's always a temptation to do something nice and easy. So that, that makes it easy there. And, and you, know, you don't have to sign up for anything and such. Coming. Uh, so it's not a, you know, somebody who only plays Monopoly will find they're in the wrong place. We obviously we wish to convert them immediately. But, <laughs> um, but it would be slightly, it would have been mentioned that, uh, you know, there are other games that's what we're here for. And if anyone were to come along and say, can we have a game of Monopoly? The answer would be, it has to be said, no. So the Wednesday night, the main thing, um, it's now getting quite crowded because Friday night, but Friday night magic. Mm. Uh, Saturdays, there will be normally something played. In fact, there's some board games being fitted in amongst things on, on the Saturday. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh! is uh, once a month here. Yeah. Uh, now we sometimes have Yu-Gi-Oh! and something else. Uh, so that's uh, that. We've got Malifaux now on a Tuesday night again. It's a bit of the blind leading the blind, all trying to learn how it plays mm. and teach each other and, and start to again. So and give people an opportunity to to come down again in a. This isn't a this isn't a tournament. This isn't a, a you know. Yeah, a just something a bit more sort of informal. Down, yeah, yeah. So so we're, we're using the shop as a general kind of playing area, um, and and. Of an evening, if I'm going to be stuck here doing some work anyway, I might as well, yeah, might as well have people playing games. Well, yeah, a bit of really, I can't really not myself, <laughs> yeah. uh, So, uh, in a couple of months, you've got uh, a bigger event coming up, an annual event. Yes, yes, the 23rd annual Beer and Pretzels Games Weekend. That's, uh, which uh, ends a sign of how long <laughs> we've been at it, uh, and uh, and that's been in the middle of May. You know, uh, First year we came up here and set it up mm. to find out if there was uh, interest in it, which there was. So uh, I think I'd be skinned alive if I didn't run it. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, board games, role playing games, war games, any, anything goes there. And uh, originally it was to uh, allow people to try out their their games and games inventors, a number of school games inventors. Oh, right, uh, some uh, prototypes. Yes. Um, and uh, I mean, um, probably not this year, but in recent times, sometimes when he's not been quite so so busy, uh, Martin Wallace would be one of the people who have come along. Oh, really? He became quite as, as famous. Um, David Watts, again going 20 years ago, the Railway Rivals fame, mm. and he would always have his latest games. But it's now, as it's developed, um, Expo in Birmingham now has, has sort of sprung from that, some of the regulars. Uh, who used to go along, or we also do a, a bigger, more up-to-date thing. Um, so while um, uh, Bill and Pretzels has become, again, a kind of a giant meeting of friends, mm. anyway, sort of two or three hundred friends came together, <laughs> uh, with, with beer, of course. One year I could not get them at all, and uh, it was beer and cheesy nibbles, and uh, <laughs> I got complaints, you know, people would say, this is just not the right event anymore. So uh, other than that, it was exactly the same, of course. But, so yeah, we got the pretzels sorted. And then in every three months we have a mini beer and pretzels and we'll get the Raiders of the Games covered, which which is one that I don't organise. I think it's organised by, by sort of friends You've and customers. Got to who, sleep who, at who, some point. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, yes. I mean, fortunately, beer and pretzels more or less organises itself these days, so long as I make sure that the food is there and the beer is there and, uh, and, and uh, the council will book the correct date, which they, they didn't this year, so it's a week earlier than it's oh, meant right. to be, which is annoying. But, uh, but uh, yes, the... Uh, Rage of the Games Cupboard uh, was a case of people finally finding somewhere that 
was suitable for a, a smaller meeting. It is, it is our raison d'etre really, although we've, uh, we've always done mail order and we've been online since 1996, we found that uh, three, only 3% three of internet users were in Europe, let alone the UK, <laughs> uh, but spent a profitable year selling uh, German games to the Japanese as a technophobe, it was a strange thing uh, for to be doing, but so we thought we'd better give it a try. The actual proportion of mail order has stayed fairly much the same mm. over the years because of course there's always been a lot masses of online competition anyone can can and, and frequently does um, uh, uh, set up a uh, website and say here get this from me even cheaper than whoever's doing it cheaper the most place but uh, you know, they may or may not have it they may or may not provide support but there will always be someone cheaper mm. but as you said you can't uh, actually physically come in and, and look at it and, and discover something that you hadn't realized was there in the first place and just to you say actually physically see see the components and and uh, and get talking to people, you know, other customers in the shop, and and uh, you get a different perspective on it. In the early nineties, people turned away from board games when they, if it was if it wasn't something you could just plug straight in, and it was like watching the telly effectively. <laughs> then 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 they stopped playing to a large extent. Now there's clearly a board game revival, and yet as mm. you say, most places will, still will not su support. A larger range and where the larger shops are sometimes taking a, a basic range people still aren't moving on to it from that and yeah. just talking to both manufacturers and managers of the, the, the larger shops they're not moving on to the other games unless there is a, a proper game shop in their town and they discover it and then they discover the rest you know it it's, uh, just doesn't work just trying to look up what's online no. um, without for the if you know what you want it's great if you don't you know, if you need to, to you've, you've, you've discovered, most people discover games through playing with a friend. Oh, I didn't realise that existed, where did you get it? And then at that point, they need to go and go and, and look and talk about things and try them out. And this and is exactly so. the sort of place to do so. So are I, <laughs> yes, and we're all trying to carry on doing it as long as we can. <laughs> if you're lucky enough to have a friendly local game store, this really is the gateway into the world of gaming. If you don't, the chances are you will have a local games group. Even some of the war games groups will have a, a broader interest into board gaming, or maybe you're into war gaming already, or role playing. These things all are quite intertwined. If you find one, chances are you'll find the rest. If you want to look up information about games or just want to browse, I would recommend boardgamegeek.com. This website, although it can suffer from the same uh, foibles as any internet forum, it is a database and a very powerful one. Obviously, big thanks are due to everybody at Spirit Games, and this includes the Wednesday Night Gamers who put up with me poking my camera into their business. Uh, so big thank you to everybody there, and uh, I do hope that this has been a useful video that's opened your eyes as to perhaps how you can get into gaming through your local gaming scene and your local gaming shop. As always, if you like this video, please click like or subscribe. Uh, any comments, positive, negative, as long as they're constructive, post them below. I'd also like it if people could uh, check out Spirit Games' website, I'll provide a link at the end. Thanks very much for watching.